Welcome everyone, this is part two of lecture four um, on histogram-based detection and tracking algorithms. Uh, so this part uh, concerns a paper that's called Histograms of Oriented Gradient, Gradients that was published uh, in 2005 by uh, Delal and Triggs and I think uh, is one of those papers that you should know. So here we will use concepts um, uh, shown in lecture two. So, for example, uh, you, you will need to understand what convolution does and how to compute the image gradients. We will not too much look at edge detection this, uh, this time, but uh, for sure you need to understand those two concepts. So if you don't, go back to lecture two. So today we will look at the problem of detecting pedestrians, so people in an image, and we'll um, localize them using bounding boxes, like in this photo here. So the idea with HOG is that we will use a region of interest. We will process this image to create a feature vector in some feature space. It could be high dimensional uh, space, like maybe thousands or so of dimensions. And then we'll have a distribution of samples that could either be positive samples, so pedestrians, or um, non-pedestrians, like the rest of the world could be, uh, you know, a tree or whatever. And so, in using that data set, we'll train a classifier, which tells us, given a new sample, whether it is a pedestrian or a non-pedestrian, right? So, binary classifier. Hawk, though, doesn't tell us how to classify, we'll just use anything off the shelf Hawk tells us what this feature space looks like, what these dimensions mean and how to compute them. And as you may have guessed, the features relate to histograms of oriented gradients, although I would probably have called it histograms of gradient orientations. So in a region of interest or um, ROI, um, we'll collect you know, those gradient vectors or rather their orientation. So please go back to lecture two to see how you compute them. It's basically just running a 10 on the Y and X directions of the gradient. Um, and then we have those vectors that kind of uh, describe the, you know, the outline, the contour of a person. Um, it also will describe um, you know other uh, elements in this are uh, in this region of interest like for example objects in the background or even um, gradients that happen to be in the you know or on the body of the person so how do we create the feature vector for a given region of interest we'll divide the actual image into so-called cells and then we'll concatenate cells into blocks. And then those blocks uh, within this region of interest form um, the feature vector. Now, how do we compute that? Well, first, the cells. Cells are eight by eight pixel uh, squares like that. So 64 pixels form one of those cells and then you know, uh, you divide your image into these cells. Now, your region of interest has now to overlap um, with these cells. So you cannot shift your region of interest by one pixel, but only by eight pixels, okay? So each location that you want to then classify as a person or a non-person uh, needs to be uh, shifted by eight pixels to cover exactly that uh, you know, discretization of uh, cells in your image. And to create the feature vector, we'll use so-called blocks. And the block uh, consists of two by two cells. So uh, it's 16 by 16 pixels, basically. And then we'll compute a so-called block descriptor, and I'll show you on the next slide how that works. And we'll concatenate those block descriptor for overlapping blocks within the region of interest. Yeah? So for example, the next block would be this 
the next would be shifted again one uh, cell to the right okay so before i show you how to create the block descriptor and from that the whole descriptor for the uh, region of interest we need to talk about what is a graded histogram and how does hog create these for each of those cells so first of all we will uh, you know define um, the discretization of the bins uh, uh, sorry of the histogram um, into nine bins so corresponding to 20 degrees each right so bin number zero uh, you know collects gradients from zero to 20 degrees and the next 20 degrees go in bin number one and so on um, and so my first question for you is why don't we use the full two pi so for each pixel in a given cell in this eight by eight pixel cell we compute the gradient vectors and then the gradient orientation look up lecture two to find how that works and then we don't count we add gradient magnitudes um, and we'll use something that the paper calls voting by bilinear manipulation. So one gradient vector, yeah. So for example, um, with an orientation of 77 degrees, obviously doesn't exactly fall on the 70 degrees, and you know is even further away from the 90 degrees bin. We could count it into the uh, bin number three but what we'll do is we'll add a little bit of the gradient magnitude into this bin and a little bit into bin number four and that's exactly um, how the paper does it so my question is how would you do it would you do 50 50 or how would you weigh uh, this um, sharing of graded magnitudes between those two bits okay now the block descriptor for each block which is this yellow greenish uh, square here we concatenate the two by two histograms to a so-called block descriptor B yeah so each of these eight by eight pixel cells now has a nine-dimensional histogram that contains 64 uh, gradient orientations yeah? and now we'll concatenate these nine sorry these four nine-dimensional vectors into a one um, uh, 36 dimensional vector and we call that vector b and then we'll normalize B um, by this uh, by this um, uh, rule here. So B divided by the length squared plus epsilon, and then we we uh, um, uh, compute the square root of that. So B. So if if epsilon was zero, that would just scale B to length one now my question is why do you think we add this epsilon okay so note that since each cell is covered by four blocks except those you know that are in the border of the region of interest um we'll compute uh, we'll use the gradients, sorry, the gradient histograms um, from one cell four times, but we'll, you know, these uh, enter this vector B in a different way because it may be differently normalized. Yeah, so um, this cell, for example, here is overlapped or overlaps with this second block, with this third block, and with this fourth block. Now, the final hog descriptor will be a concatenation of all block descriptors 
So even the overlapping ones, right? Within a region of interest. So all block descriptors are concatenated into a hoc feature. And this hoc feature vector, H, now is again normalized like we saw before. And then the authors do something um, that helped in the performance. And don't ask why, they just tried and it worked. Okay, so what we'll do with every entry of the um, hog feature descriptor is we'll clip it. So two large values are replaced by this hyperparameter tau. And then we'll normalize again um, like before. Um, and again, the question is why do we have this epsilon here? Okay, so with a region of interest of 128 by 64 pixels, we have 16 by 8 cells, 15 by 7 blocks, and that results in a feature vector that has 3,780 dimensions. So this is our space in which we collect our positive and negative samples and in which the classifier now needs to find the optimal decision boundary. Okay. H, as I said, now needs to be classified. We'll obviously do a binary classification, so we'll try to discriminate pedestrians from non-pedestrians. And in the original paper, they used a support vector machine. If you don't know what uh, an SVM is, don't worry. Uh, we'll do in the exercises something uh, much simpler, maybe not as good, but uh, there are other ways. And um, hog doesn't really tell you what to do. You can use whatever you want, um, whatever you like, whatever you you uh, have a preference for. So others obviously have used different classifiers, random forests, Gaussian mixture models, and you know many many more. But now that's something that overlaps with the course machine learning. And uh, for those of you who haven't heard about, you know, training a model, what that is, we'll ask, uh, we'll answer those questions later in the in the Q and A session. But it's probably good to go ahead and watch those videos um, on, for example, logistic regression. Link below. Now that's an example that I pulled from YouTube, and you see that it does detect quite reliably. Uh, pedestrians that are close to the camera, but those that uh, walk, uh, you know, uh, pretty far away from the camera that are too small, they are not detected. So my question is, why do you think that is? What are the possible reasons for that? And what are the possible um, ways to actually cope with different scales? Okay. Your exercise will now um, be um, to first read the paper, to then implement and test the gradient uh, histograms like discussed, and then implement the Hawk descriptor. You will then you try to use uh, a very simple classifier, maybe KNN, and maybe logistic regression, or support vector machines to detect pedestrians on a data set that we will provide a uh, link below. Okay. Okay, let's sum up. Hawk features are based on histograms of gradient orientations, and we'll collect all those orientations within so-called cells, so 8 by 8 pixel uh, cells. And these histograms are then concatenated over so-called blocks to create a block descriptor, and these block descriptors are then further concatenated to form a feature vector within one fixed size region of interest. It's a special type of histogram. It's not the, the count of uh, gradient directions. It's rather the sum um, of the gradient magnitudes. Hog can be used to detect pretty much everything that has gradients. Um, and um, you just need a respective data set. And Hog is the feature the classifier, though, it can be anything you like. And uh, that was the pretty fast lecture on 
histogram of gradients. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, see you all on Wednesday.